come from the book of Joshua. Hear the word of the Lord. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, cities you did not build. And you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And Joshua says that if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The word of the Lord. You ever have an idea that the moment you thought was a good idea and then you started getting into it, you realized maybe it wasn't the sharpest thing you ever thought about? <laughs> Let's analyze this. I am coming behind Dr. Koenig, Dr. Rainey, the original pastor of New Hope, the general presbyter, charter members, and most of you have been here a lot longer than I have. And then there's just Brian. What was I thinking? If you've noticed, those who have spoken have spoken to the history of New Hope. And when you consider that the majority of new church development, somewhere in the 90 percentile range, fail, New Hope has failed. It's succeeded beyond all imagination. And I can speak about my tenure here for the last four years, but many of you know that, and I'm not talking about what's happened in the last year, because I'm tired of it. I was asked, why the 40th? You heard it in the call to worship. 40 days and 40 nights it rained, and Noah was cooked up in the kennel with all the animals. You know he was happy to get out of the ark at the end of that time. For 40 years they wandered in the desert because they wouldn't ask for directions. You know when they came to the promised land, they were happy. And our Lord was tempted for 40 days. And then after that would become his ministry. The number 40 is significant in our scriptures. I'm not an expert. I can't tell you why 40, but it's there. But all three of those stories and so many more don't end. There's always something new. I want to throw out a couple of things. First off, let me tell this piece. In December of 1991, I was not at New Hope. I just graduated from Texas a now, or escaped, I don't know which. And I announced to the universe and the God, I would never go back to school. That's what God did, actually. And when we come to those monuments in life, we set up markers. That particular piece of paper is in my office. This morning, we've been graced with our own stone to set up. Certificates, monuments, we arrive at those points in life and we want to celebrate them. They are wonderful things. We have come to some achievement. Cut the cake, blow out the candles, sing the songs, pop the balloons. But what gets lost is, it is never the end, but a beginning. We come to this day to celebrate 40 years. And for some, 40 years is a long time. For some, 40 years isn't so long. They announced at the press room meeting, their church is 130 years old. We're going to get there. Not in my time. <laughs> But we come to this day not just to celebrate the past, but to recommit ourselves to tomorrow. When the Israelites came to the promised land, there was excitement. This was a land that was promised with good food and good land. You know, when Noah came out of the ark, he was ecstatic. He no longer had to clean out the stalls. And I can only imagine what our Lord felt when he came out of the wilderness and being tempted. I know we feel a promise of a new tomorrow. Something different, something better. Church is kind of goofy, though. It resembles life because we're always afraid of change, and yet change is the very nature of the beast. Bill, 
Simple yes or no question. If you need to study, let me know. But 40 years ago, could you imagine having screens in the sanctuary? I was banking on the answer. <laughs> our goals as a people of God do not always change. If you look at our book of order, we have the great ends of the church. Forgive me for reading these. I haven't memorized them. Great ends of the church are the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind, the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, the maintenance of divine worship, the preservation of the truth, the promotion of social righteousness, and the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. Those great ends don't change. What they look like might. I would argue a year and a half ago, many of us who worship here at New Hope in Katy would not have imagined the sanctuary looking this beautiful. This is fantastic. It hasn't been without a struggle. Forty years of church did not go on without a struggle. In my team here, I've heard some of the struggles. But I've heard the joys, the fellowship, the friendship. But change comes. And even the way we think of church is changing. If somebody asks you, where do you go to church? You might say, New Hope, 1350 Mason Road in Katy, Texas. But even that question now changes. It's not where you go to church, it's where you go to church. As we go into the world, as we go where the people have needs, that is where we will find the church. That is where we will find the people of God. This becomes a base and a wonderful place. A wonderful place to gather in friendship and fellowship, to see the smiles on the faces. As we look to the future, I want to quote Stanley Harris. The role of the church is to cultivate people who can risk being peaceful in a violent world, risk being kind in a competitive society, risk being faithful in an age of cynicism, risk being gentle among those who admire the tough, risk love and it may not be returned because we have confidence that in Christ we have been reborn into a new reality. We celebrate today. Certificate given us by our presbytery, will be framed and hung in a prominent place to reflect where new hope is coming from. But it is not the stopping point. The people that Joshua spoke to will say, we will worship the God, they will get on board and a stone will be erected. But it is not a stopping point. It is nothing more than a pause as we move forward. But the need of the world is much, and Christ is ever-present. So I invite everybody, this day, reflect. Look at the photo albums, look at the stories, or the black metal pictures, whichever the case may be. Share some laughs. Tell the stories. For even now, we continue to tell the stories of God's church. Through his word, through our experiences. What we've seen this morning, in the previous speakers, that the, the roots of love run deep in this congregation. As we move forward, we let those trees and those branches of leaves grow, that others may rest in the shade of Christ's love. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you bring us together, you've called us each by name. You've called us for a purpose, a purpose far beyond our imagination and understanding. But we have chosen to hear your call, Lord, and to answer it. We give ourselves completely to following where you would lead us. Lord, give us the courage, the wisdom, and the strength to follow you. All these things we pray in your name. Amen.